Alright guys, so welcome back to another review of the One Bad Day series, and yeah, we're moving right along to Batman One Bad Day Two-Face. Now, just a reminder for what One Bad Day is, One Bad Day is basically a series of big one-shots, 68-page one-shots, that center around different Batman villains every month, and they're done by a different creative team. The last one was done by Tom King and uh, Mitch Gardas, which I really enjoyed the Riddler book, and I'm not even a Riddler fan. This time around, we're getting Mariko Tamaki with Javier Fernandez and Jody uh, Belanair. Hope I'm saying those names right. And yeah, I'm really digging these. I really am uh, digging these comics. Uh, I've been really digging the One Bad Day series so far, even though it's only been two books. Um, and I know, and I'm really excited for next month because next month is the Penguin. And I'm really excited for uh, for um, One Bad Day, The Penguin. Because that one, the way they described it is... <laughs> how they described it is basically Scarface, but with Penguin uh, instead of in to as, a, as a Tony Montana. That's fucking great. The best part is it's being written by John Ridley, who most of you guys would know best is from the other history of the DC Universe. And he's also been known to write... He was also the writer and director I no he wasn't the director but yeah he was the writer for the movie 12 Years a Slave as well as a few others so the guy is pretty damn good so I'm really excited for uh, Penguin and there, then it's after that it's it's uh, Mr. Freeze then Catwoman then Bane then Clayface and then finally it ends with Ra's al Ghul but yeah so let's get into uh, enough about that let's get into One Bad Day Two-Face so One Bad Day Two-Face is actually kind of whereas the Riddler story was kind of nebulously in continuity, like it was very like nebulous in continuity. Um, this book is very much set in Mariko Tamaki's like what she's doing in Batman and as well as Batgirl. Um, this comic is more or less ref directly references events in the DC universe. Like this, it wasn't like the Tom King one where like Tom King clearly got to play with outside of continuity because he's Tom King. Tamaki, on the other hand, was like, no, 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 this is just like an, a story nebulously in the current DC timeline. It, it's cool. Um, but yeah, so this story is that uh, we follow Harvey Dent, who was once again rehabilitated, and he goes to see his father. He's going to see his father for his 88th birthday and retirement party. But the problem is someone has been sending death threats to his father, and he's asked Batman to assist in protecting his father from whoever is um, whoever is doing this. You can probably guess where this is going. You already you, no. In fact, you already know where this is going. You already know. Like the moment I uh, like I, I understood the plot, I was like, oh, I get it. Wasn't even clever. And I'm not to say this is bad. This is not a bad book, but compared to the. Um, to the other one compared to uh, the Tom King Riddler story. Yeah. And no knock to Mariko Tamaki. In no way knock to, to Mariko. I am not Mar Ma I am not knocking Tamaki on this book. I am in no way... The problem is is that there. Th this is the same reason I don't have a lot of rid favorite Riddler stories. The problem with Two-Face, and I've never been a big Two-Face guy. I mean, yeah, it's a cool villain and all, but the reason why I've never been like a big Two-Face guy is because every fucking Two-Face story is the same fucking story every fucking time. It's the same story. Over and over, it's just done with a different coat of paint. Like, no one can do something bad. Like, okay, yeah, there's Batman, like, Dark Knight, Dark City, and there's a few other, like, bits and pieces, like, okay, we're not doing the Harvey Dent Two-Face confliction, but really, it's all the same fucking story where... Batman is trying to get reach out to Harvey, and we all think, oh, Harvey's still in there. Nope, it's it's still Two-Face. Nope. And, yep, this is the same thing. Now, I will say that um, the artwork in here is beautiful. I really love the artwork. Um, and for the most part, Tamaki is good. She knows her continuity. Like, Tamaki definitely knows her canon, and we do get to see uh, Nakano in here, the current mayor of Gotham. Um... So that's really cool. Let me. I actually want to show you the artwork real quick because it's actually some very nice artwork from um, for, uh, from uh, uh, Javier Fernandez. It's really good. Like, check that out. That is. So, this was some sick artwork. I really enjoyed. Um, the story is um, is uh, pretty decent. And also, if you are a fan of Stephanie Brown and Cassandra Kane, 
me, <laughs> like like me, then you're going to get a treat out of this because Cassandra and Stephanie play big parts in this book. Like, they play legit parts in this story. And I really like that. I really do like that that's, you know, that's kind of the thing. We get more of the Bat family in here. And, yeah, Stephanie Brown is actually, like, literally says, listen, we've been doing this a lot. Like, she basically says what everyone has, has basically said about Harvey Dent. Like, We've done this before, multiple times. Do you realize how this is going to play out? And Batman's like, I have to believe it's not. You know, Harvey Dent isn't your father. And for those wondering, Har uh, Stephanie Brown's um, father is a Batman villain. He's the Clue Master. Um, and she's like, you know, he's not, he's like, he's not his father. He's like, and immediately Stephanie goes, wow, thanks for projecting, asshole. <laughs> That's not even part of the combat. Like, yeah, you did thank way to deflect, jerk. I'm like, thank you. I love Stephanie Brown on the grounds of she doesn't take Bat but Bruce's shit at all in this book. Cassandra is also really cool to see in here. We even get Barbara. Um, yeah. And the other thing is you may be thinking, oh, you know, Bat, the, you know, Brown and Kane take over. While I do wish that was kind of the case because I'm such a Cassandra Kane fan, uh, they're more of, they just do more of assistance than anything else. Um... And, yeah. Now, the big story is, as you've probably guessed, yeah, Two-Face is still in there, and he never left, and he's here to punish his father because he's trying to change their legacy and change it away from Two-Face being the, the Dent legacy. I won't say how he gets back at his father, but it's actually kind of fucked up. I will say that while this is kind of like you knew where this is going, how this went was... Um, how this how this played out was pretty fucked up like it was like how it ends is is pretty fucked up um and i do like how to how dent how two-face basically you know is talking to batman who clearly knows he's bruce wayne like i i i guess i missed something in the comics where two-face no he's all he's known i remember yep now i remember the story where he figures out bruce wayne is batman but he keeps it to himself but that's the thing is that like He's talking to Batman, and, and he's like, do you just keep saving me because you want to save your, like, an image of yourself or, like, an, a White Knight version of your father? Like, is that what this has all been about? Because I feel like you just have a guilt complex, which I'm like, yes, but that's not the point, Harvey. <laughs> anyway. Um, it's a decent book, even though I kind of figured out what was going on from the get-go. Like, I already figured out, like, oh, we're doing this. Okay, we're we're go we're going this route. All right, we are playing to that route of the story. Okay, um, yeah, but all in all, it's a decent story. It's just like it feels like ninety percent of the time, Two Face stories end with like exact like they basically are the same Two Face story over and over again. And that's why I've never been like a Two Face guy because I'm like there was only like one good Two Face story, and it's Long Halloween, really. Really, it's just Long Halloween, which they do reference. They also reference the Jason Todd story, where they reveal that Two-Face murdered his father. And they also reference the Scott Snyder story, not too long ago in All-Star Batman. And there's also, um, like, again, Tamaki knew her or knew what she was doing. Like, Tamaki generally knew what what she... She understood the her homework. So I will say that. All in all, not bad. But compared to the Tom King Riddler story, I will say the Tom King Riddler story is probably better. Um, but I'm, I'm very excited for the Penguin story and all the others. So I'm going to keep reading these and reviewing these. So yeah. So you guys tell me in the comments below, if you've read Batman One Bad Day, uh, you guys let me know what you guys thought of it. Just comment below, let me know. And once again, I'm Mr. Multiverse. I'll see you next time in the Multiverse.